In today's episode, you will learn how to control a robot car wirelessly using Arduino, L298 in motor driver, a flex sensor or pin sensor, and 433 MHz RF transmitter and receiver. In this project, the flex sensor will be used as the accelerator, while the joystick will be used for controlling the forward, reverse, left and right movements. The motor speed can be controlled in real time as we close and open the hand. The robot control system can be activated and deactivated using the built-in joystick push button. Once the control system is activated, then the flex sensor and joystick together can be used to control the robot car. Straight fingers means zero acceleration, so even if you move the joystick, the motors won't rotate. But as you start bending the flex sensor, the motors start rotating. Then depending on the amount of the bend, the motor speed can be controlled in real time. This is the third version of the robot car, while in the second version I used only the joystick to control the speed and movement of the robot car. The program used in this project was a little bit complex, so that's why I decided to make another version of this robot and use a separate sensor for the speed controlling. So that's why I created version 3. But in the first version I used an Android cell phone to control the robot car using the HC05 Bluetooth module. The links are given in the description. Today's episode is based on my previous two tutorials. In this tutorial, I explained how to assemble the robot parts and how to use the L298 in motor driver to control the forward, left, right and reverse movement. In this tutorial, I also explained how to control the speed of a DC motor using the pulse rate modulation. While in this tutorial I explain the joystick pinouts, its basic working principle, its interfacing with Arduino and basic programming to control some LEDs depending on the movement of the joystick. If you are a beginner and you have never used the joystick module and L298 in motor driver, then I highly recommend you should first watch these tutorials and then you can resume from here. Without any further delay, let's get started. All the connections are exactly the same as explained in my previous tutorial. I didn't even change a single wire. The only modification is on the programming side, which is really easy and I will explain each and every instruction. This is the transmitter side based on the 433 MHz RF transmitter and a two-axis joystick. The wiring is exactly the same as used in version 2. In version 3, I did a very little modification, that is, I added this small circuit and added this flick sensor, which is also known as the bent sensor. The flex sensor is basically a variable resistor and its resistance changes as we bend the sensor. The resistance decreases as the bend increases. I have a very detailed getting started tutorial on how to use a flex sensor. I have also used this sensor in a project based on human bait posture monitoring system. I will provide links in the description if in case you want to watch these tutorials. As you can see, I have soldered two wires, red and white, with a flex sensor, which are connected with this circuit. So basically, this flex sensor is connected in series with a 10K resistor, which makes a voltage divider. The wire from the middle of the flex sensor and 10K resistor is connected with the analog pin A0. This wire is connected with pin number 6 of the Arduino to provide 5 volts to this circuit while this wire is connected with the Arduino's ground. 
I'll be back after fixing this sensor on the glove. As you can see, the flex sensor is fixed on the glove by opening and closing the hand. I can control the amount of bend. Now let's have a look at the transmitter and receiver programming. This project is based on two programs. This program is written for the transmitter while this program is written for the receiver. First, let's start with the transmitter programming. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure that you download the virtual wire library. The pins used in this project are exactly the same as explained in version 2. In this program, I will only explain the changes. Integer power 1 is equal to 6. Pin number 6 of the Arduino will be used to supply 5 volts to the flex sensor circuit. Integer flex S is equal to A0. The flex sensor is connected with the analog pin A0 of the Arduino. Integer F data. This will be used to store the value coming from the flex sensor. Then I defined some variables for storing the status of the N1, N2, N3 and N4 pins which later will be sent to the receiver circuit for controlling the direction of the DC motors. The white setup function consists of the same instructions. This time I added only the flex sensor and set it as input. Then starts the white loop function. The control function is a user defined function and is used to change the status of the built in joystick button from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0. I have already explained this function in my previous tutorial. F button F is equal to is equal to 1. If the joystick button is pressed, then simply read the joystick VRX, VRY and the flex sensor using the analog read function and store the values and variables X data, Y data and F data. Then using the map function, the value of the flex sensor is limited between 0 and 255. So when we open and close the hand, the minimum and maximum values that we can get on 0 to 255. Then we use some F conditions to further limit the values of the flex sensor. If X data greater than 600, if the joystick is moved in the forward direction, then simply store 1 in these two variables and store 0 in these two variables. If X data less than 300, if the joystick is moved in the reverse direction, then simply store 0 in these two variables and store 1 in these two variables. And similarly for the joystick right and left movements. This if condition is used to check the normal position of the joystick. So when the joystick is at normal position, it will set all the variables to zero. Then using the send data function, the values stored in the variables in one data, in two data, in three data, in four data, button if and if data are sent to the receiver circuit. The send data function is exactly the same but this time I only increase the number of input arguments. While the rest of the program is exactly the same as explained in version 2. Now let's have a look at the receiver programming. Maximum programming instructions are exactly the same as explained previously. I defined some new variables. The L298 and motor connections with Arduino remains the same. The byte setup function also remains the same. To organize the code, I created a function with the name RFRECEIVE. And pasted the code of the radio frequency module. This is the same exact code. Not even a single instruction is changed. These instructions are used to split the entire message and store the strings and variables L, M, N, O, P and Q.
Then these strings are converted into integers and store the values and variables in one data, in two data, in three data, in four data, BF data and M speed. If BF data equals equals zero. If we have received zero from the transmitter, which means that the joystick push button is not pressed, then simply turn off both the motors. This condition means if the joystick is at its normal position, which means that the joystick is not moved in any direction, then also turn off both the motors. This condition is used to check if the joystick is moved in the forward direction and also the joystick button is pressed. Then adjust the motor speed using the airlock write function. The M speed is the value that is coming from the flex sensor wirelessly. This value changes as we open and close the hand. While these instructions are used to run both the motors in forward direction, these are the instructions which I have already explained in my previous version of the same robot car. Similarly for the reverse, right and left. The get value is a user defined function and it takes three arguments as the input, the data, separator and the index. This function is used to split the entire message. These programs can be downloaded from my blog page. I have already uploaded these programs. Let's watch this project in action. In the next version, I will use a different technology to control this robot. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.